Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pix Imperfect. I hope you're having a great day and if not, know that you can turn it around anytime you wish. I trust you. Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you how you can use actual real shadows to make your composites absolutely realistic. Now, in the past, we have talked about using the shadows of the subject, the original ones, in a new background. But what if we use the entire shadow from the original image and put it on a new background? Sometimes it just works incredibly, like in this example. You can experiment too. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back at the magical world of Photoshop, and if you want to go ahead and download any of the photos shown in the video, you know what to do. Check the links in the description. So first of all, let's create a selection of the subject. Now you can take your entire time to do it. So in this case, I'm just going to use the select subject button. So select any of these three tools, the magic wand, the quick selection or the object selection. And at the top, you would see select subject in the later versions of Photoshop. By the way, if you're using an older version of Photoshop, you can use the refine edge, the pen tool, whatever you like. So let's click on select subject. You know what? I'm not really proud of the latest update in Photoshop. I don't know what they're doing. Anyway, let's restart it. See? That's what I was talking about. So now we have restarted Photoshop and this time let's pray to the gods of Adobe who charge us a monthly fee that this works. And yeah, they listened, thankfully. So once you have the selection in place, click on the mask button. Now it did leave out this particular area. So how do we take care of that? Let's go inside of select and mask. So with the mask selected at the top, you can click on select and mask. Now inside of that, you can use the refine edge tool right there and just paint over the fussy areas. So let's make the brush a little larger and let's paint off over this area that area is taken care of now you can take all the time in the world to do it now it also took out some extra areas so you can take the brush and just add in this seems about right now before you hit ok scroll down and check output to it's selected to the right option that you wanted so in this case we just wanted the layer mask as it was before and hit ok and it's improved. Now let's bring in our new background. By the way, you can also download this. So let's go to our Finder or Explorer and drag and drop the new background over the canvas. Not at the top, otherwise it would open as a different document. So let's adjust it to your liking. This seems about right. You can also squish it if you want to. It's a texture. No one can tell. All right, let's just fit the canvas to the screen. And by the way, to do that, you can press Control or Command Zero. All right. Let's bring the background under the subject. Let's name the subject. Organization is important. Now at this point, it just doesn't look realistic. So what do we need to do? Make a copy of the subject and this is just for the shadows. So let's name this layer and put it under the subject. Let's name this layer shadows. All right. You can also just rename it accordingly anyway. Now, since we're going to extract the shadows from the entire image, we don't need the mask. So let's drag the mask and drop it to the trash can or the dustbin, depending upon the kind of English you use. So there you go. We don't need the mask. So let's click on delete. Now, what is the blend mode that we usually use for shadows? Ask yourself, what is the blend mode which darkens? Multiply, right? So let's change the blend mode from normal to multiply. By the way, you can use any blend mode from the darken group, but multiply creates the smoothest gradients. If you Go to darken. It's not as nice, but multiply is actually the best. Now, at this point, it will also add some color to it because the original image had some color to the wall. So if you don't want that color, press Control Shift U, Command Shift U. That will take away the color. Control Shift U or Command Shift U is the shortcut for desaturating the layer. And if you look at the layer and just that layer, you would see that the colors are taken away. So hold the Alt key, the Option key, and click on the I again to turn everything back on. Now you must look at the image and say, Unmesh, the hair looks a little odd. And there's a reason why it does. The hair is so thin, especially around the edge, that it takes up the color of the original background. And that's what it's doing here. If you look at the original background, it took up that color. Once we created the mask, it still has that color to it. So how do we take care of that? Now we know that the original background is brighter than the hair, right? Have a look at it. Background is brighter than the hair. And also we know that multiply is a blend mode which hides anything that is 100% white and shows everything that is 100% black, right? And it controls the opacity accordingly. If the object is brighter, it will be less opaque. If the object is darker, it would be more opaque. So why cannot we use multiply to control the opacity of which areas show up? In this case, hair is darker, so it will show up more. And the background is lighter, so it will show up less. 
And we have already done that with shadows. So why not hit two targets with one arrow? So with this multiply layer, we are not only creating the shadows, but we can also use it for the hair. Because if you just have this turned on, the hair looks perfect. So let's go to the subject layer and just remove the edges. If you don't want to disturb the original mask, select that layer, press Ctrl or Command G, just put that one layer inside a group and create a mask for that group. That way you have two masks for the same layer. Now take the brush, black as the foreground color, take a soft round brush and just erase the edges. That's all you need to do. There you go, easily taken care of. Now be a little careful, don't paint too hard. If this seems harsh, don't worry about it, we're gonna take care of that later. By doing this, it's taking up the color of the new background. Have a look right here, it's taking up that yellow, looks so natural. There you go, once you're done, let's go to the properties of the mask by double clicking on it. If you don't see the properties, just click on the mask. Let's go to window and make sure properties is checked. Go to the properties of the mask and then simply decrease the density. Density is like opacity for the layer mask. If the density is at zero, it acts like there was no mask, right? As soon as you increase the density, it will just increase the opacity of the mask, all right? So let's control it. Let's keep it at about 60%. We can always change it later because 100 is just too dark. All right, let's keep it at 60 for now and be happy with it. Still, the background doesn't look absolutely realistic. What do you think is the problem here? Have a look at the subject. The shadows on the subject are darker than that of the background. And that is what's giving a telltale sign that the background is fake. So we need to make the shadows in the background darker. And how do we do that? With, you already know it curves. So let's go to the shadows and create a curves adjustment layer. We want to limit it just to the shadows layer. So click on this button. That way, whatever you do will be limited just to the shadows. And just by doing that, have a look. This has become incredibly amazing. You can also make the brights brighter if you wish to. This will add more highlights. You can make the darks darker just like that. It's all up to you. Or you can take the midpoints and take it down. So I think this looks the most realistic to me. And there you have it. You can also play with this point on the left. Okay, there you go. And that's how, my friend, you can use real shadows to make your composites absolutely, absolutely positively realistic. Now, without the shadow, this just doesn't look right. But with the shadow, there you go. Now, on top of it, I always recommend adding something that's going to bring every element together. So you can use LUTs, you can use curves, you can use anything that you like. Just apply an adjustment to everything, both the subject and the new background. So in this case, I'm just going to apply a LUT. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose color lookup. For these cases, for sunlit cases, anywhere there is a little warmth and you want to add a little more to it, simply just use crisp warm. It's the default choice for me and it just makes everything looks okay. Now, as you can see, it's too much. You can always decrease the opacity. Another thing that you can do is take it away from the shadows. Sometimes it can be very harsh on the shadows. So double click on the right hand side of the layer and take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. What we are doing is we are taking it away from the dark areas of the underlying layer or the layers that lie under it. Okay. So by moving this slider, we are simply taking it away from the dark areas of all of these layers combined. Okay, so again, this is harsh. So hold the Alt key, the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart, and this will make the transition smoother. There you go. This adds a lot. Here's the before, here's the after, brings things together. You can also use some other LUTs on top of it. Let's go to Color Lookup. By the way, we just recently launched Preset Power. You can use LUTs from that if you want. You don't really have to buy. I'm not doing a plug here, but I find them extremely useful. So for example, this is Travel 1. See, just by adding that, it just enhances the sunlight. So travel one, travel two. In my opinion, I think travel one was nice. Travel seven is also good. So you can find all of that right here. The link will be in the description, but you don't really have to get it. Crisp warm is more than enough. You can also combine different LUTs that are built into Photoshop, or you can create your own LUT. Here's a video on how to do that. So I'm gonna stick with travel one and just decrease the opacity, slowly and gradually increase it to about 34. And there you go looks just amazing. Now I highly recommend that you take a break and get back to it. You might see certain things that you might have missed. Now when I look at it after a little while, 
Have a look in the background. The background is not as warm as the subject. The subject has a little warmth due to the sunlight, but the background needs to have the same. So how do we do it? Let's create a layer, a curves adjustment layer, of course, on top of the background. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. And we need to make it a little more yellowish. So how do we do that? We know that blue is opposite of yellow, RGB opposite of CMY. So let's go blue. Red, green, blue, opposite to cyan, magenta, and yellow, just a refresher. All right, so inside the blues, let's take it down slightly. See, we are adding that yellow. Not that much, there you go. Now to balance for it, let's go to RGB and make it equally brighter. There we go, that adds some warmth. So that's it, let us do a quick little recap. All you need to do is to cut the subject out, put it on a new background. Up until now, it's very simple. Now. Make a copy of the subject layer, select the areas of the shadows that you want to extract. In this image, we chose the entire image. Delete the mask if you already had a mask. Change the blend mode to multiply. On top of that, if you don't want the original colors of the shadows, just desaturate the layer. And that is pretty much it. On top of it, you can do some adjustments to make the shadows darker or brighter. You can make some further adjustments to make the background warmer or colder. And then when it comes to hair, sometimes the original cutout will have some colors from the original background on the edges of the hair. If you do have that, just create a group of that one subject layer and create a mask of that group. That way you will have two masks for the same layer and just erase the edges. You can also control the density in case it's too harsh. And that, my friend, is pretty much it. On top of it, if you want some global effects, you can add some LUTs and your image would be ready. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. What can I do?